Hello friends, welcome. A few years ago when I was searching for Houdini tutorials, I found one from Antagma. And it was the same effect like this rib you can see. And after having boolean node in Blender, we can achieve the same effect. So in this video, which is actually two tutorials, the in the first one, we are going to make this shape, and the second one is converting this one to this shape. And first, I'm going to have a little bit of explanations on the main steps and concept, and then we are going to dive into the details. So let's do this. Okay, in here we have a simple UV sphere and I'm going to push this IQ sphere into the base mesh. So, like the render I showed you, we are going to have such shape. You can see in here. Okay, you can see that this is rounded and a smooth mesh. But think about this. Before smoothing this, we would have some shape like this. Like this one. Okay, and this has two extra parts in here and the volume which is subtracted from the base mesh in here and this part is easy, you can see that it's just a boolean, a simple boolean but these two little extra parts where our focus, our main focus is on this let me show you, yeah, this one so in the first step we are going to have this shape that's because I'm going to have a uh, one dimension of these two little parts okay and I also in the next step I'm going to do the same thing with this icosphere so we will have the shape like this okay so we can have the second dimension of these little parts and after combining this shape with the previous one, we can have this one. You can see that these little parts are actually the intersection between these two volumes. You can see? So after inter intersecting these two volumes, I can have this shape. Now I have it. I just cut this to half so you can see this better, it's just for demonstration. I can turn this off, yes. In the next step, we are going to just subtract this one from the base mesh, so I will have the shape like this. Let me turn this off, you can see, and by combining this to the previous shape, this one, we will have our almost final mesh, or final effect. After smoothing this shape, uh, by the method I used in my two previous video, you can have the final render in here, or final effect in here. But I should note that these icospheres or object that you are going to push through my main object or base mesh, uh, they should be complete enclosed object, so the boolean node could work properly, okay? And by the way, if you like these materials, this material is completely procedural and the combination of Blender noises. And if you like me to make some tutorials on making materials, uh, which actually I'm looking for uh, to make such tutorials, please just write down in the comment. And after this shape, we are going to have this one. Okay, now let's do this. First, I'm going to make a simple mesh in here by creating a cube, set the size to 40 centimeters and going to edit mode, I wanna give it one level of subdivision and I also like to shift this shape to a sphere and I can do that by going to transform to a sphere or you can just hold shift alt and press S there we go. <coughs> I'm going to give it subdivision surface, three levels. Okay. I just want to scale it down a little bit along Z axis, something like this. Okay, I'm going to apply the modifier. 
now adding uh, an aquasphere in here set the size about four centimeters and subdivision level one move it here I'm going to scatter some of these aquaspheres on my base mesh and well you know that in the last step I want to use a smooth modifier on top of my geometry node and it's going to smooth all of my objects both the base mesh which is this uh, cube and all of the scattered objects I don't want that I want to smooth just the base mesh itself not the scattered one uh, so I should separate them, separate the scattered objects and the base mesh. So how can I do that? For solving this problem, I'm going to copy this base mesh, Shift D and right click. I want this to be exactly in the same position. And I'm going to scatter all of my objects on this duplicated object. So let me name them properly. I want to name it a scatter and this is the main mesh okay and first i'm going to scatter my objects on it let me hide the main one first geometry node Scatter. Now I'm going to import this aquasphere to here. So I have my object, and I'm going to the point and distribute point on faces. Here we have. Now you can see it. Uh, the geometry is gone, so I should unhide the main object in here and also going to instance and instance some points and plugging this object into the instance okay we have our icospheres i want to set this to poison distribution i want to set a minimum distance to something like i don't know five centimeters if it works let me make it bigger okay the other thing which I'm going to do is I want these objects to be scattered on top of my main object my base mesh uh, so there are multiple ways for that you can the first way is to just hand paint some color in this color attribute you can add the color attribute and go to sculpt mode and uh, paint black and white color attributes on this mesh and the white uh, white parts are selected parts so you can import the attribute in here and set the attribute to color but I'm going to do something more procedural uh, and there are also multiple ways for this but I'm going to use normal in here okay well all the faces and points of the objects have normal and you know that normal is a vector and each vector uh, is like this has three components y, x, z components okay something like this for example we say x y z oh <laughs> okay consider that this is a normal and i want the normal of this object to be upward like this because i'm going to uh, scatter my objects on the faces which are looking upward so the normals are looking upward too well this kind of normals actually should have the z component more than zero okay if the normal was something like this the z component would be negative but when they are looking upward these normals so the z 
component should be something like this or this or this I mean they should be just positive so um, in the node editor I'm going to use compare node and set this on greater than okay um, let me show you first what I'm going to select in here you can see the white faces are selected ones and I just want to restrict the Z component not the Y and X components so I shouldn't say that only select the faces which the Y and X and Z components are more than zero I want just the Z component to be more than zero okay so you can see in, in this shape since the X and Z X and Y components are set on zero it means that it only selects the faces which also Y and X components of them are more than zero or positive so let me just reduce the restriction of X you can see that it's selecting the negative values so I should set this on minus one and also the Y value set this to minus one okay now we have it and I just like to <coughs> restrict that a little bit more in positive way okay or something like this as whatever you wish okay now we have our selection I wanna set uh, connect this selection to this selection and now my objects are scattered on top of my base mesh and it's completely procedural if you just change the base mesh you will always have objects scattered on top of that so let me check it you can see it's always on top of it and just a little bit reduce the radius I want to keep the numbers a little bit low first for having better performance but before that uh, I want to make sure that I'm giving random rotations and random scales to the scattered objects so I'm going to instances and first for example scale instances and using random value let me set this to higher values so we can see this better I want the mean to be about um, 0.8, I don't know, and the max 1.1, whatever you wish. It's just a game. Random the rotation. Rotate instances, so copy the random value. This time I want to set this random value to vector. And the max value should be 2 multiply pi because I want to have a complete range of rotation and it's 2 pi okay well we have our rotation random rotation random scale and before going further I want to just reduce the count too bad this one it's okay hide uh, hide this icosphere I don't need that here now we are ready to go and make our effect on the main object in here and let me remind you what we are going to have first uh, let me switch to the explanations thing and let me check which was this yeah this is the object we are going we are going to achieve first. This is my main basic object, which uh, I'm going to make a shell out of it. So let me switch to, to main scene and do this in here. First, I need to scale this, and there are multiple ways to scale it up and down. I'm going to use the transform in here 
you can set this to a value so you have better control I don't know something like about this number I'm going to have such a volume if it is a base mesh I'm going to have the volume around this like a shell so I need to make a bigger mesh out of it and then subtract the basic one from the bigger one now I'm going to use mesh boolean and I should subtract the smaller one from the bigger one so the smaller one is my base mesh and the bigger is which we scale up in here so we do something like this and we should have our volume in here you can see that it has it looks like a shell in here and we are also going to do the same thing with this icosphere in here okay so I should import the scatter object Now I'm going to do the same thing with the scattered object but in here since they are uh, still instances I can use um, scale instances node in here scale instances and plug the geometry use a value something like this first and I'm going to use boolean in here copy this node but before using uh, plugging this uh, node to the boolean, I should realize this instances. Subtract by the base mesh. Now after that, I'm going to intersect these common parts boolean again setting this on intersect and plugging in these wires okay here is our object let me check it let me turn off uh, the scattered object you can see the radius is a little bit too low I want to increase this so you can see this now I unhide this object and Yes. In this step, I also want to subtract the scattered object from the main object. So, using the mesh boolean again, difference, set it on difference, and plugging main object. I want to subtract the scattered object. So you can see what is happening here. Let me turn this off. Yeah, we have them. I want to combine this part and this part. So joining them together. Now we have it. You can see this. And hide the scattered object. Okay, let me just delete this okay in here we have our base model now I'm going to do something to smooth that and let me just increase this a little bit oh that's too much something like this and I'm going to convert this to volume the old technique sorry to volume Uh, I want the exterior, exterior bandwidth to be super small, like this one, voxel amount higher. Even higher. Now converting this to mesh again. Now we can have it something like this okay 
set the shading to smooth okay in this step I'm going to use um, smooth modifier set the factor about 2 set this to 20 it's going to take some time that's okay okay there we have it you can just unhide the scattered mesh you can see uh, also I can say that they are so big yeah it was just it is just for demonstration you can play with it and it's almost um, like this shape these are of course uh, so much smaller but the concepts are exactly the same the method is exactly the same and you can just change the parameters and you will have this for the next step we are going to convert this mesh actually it's a second tutorial to this mesh okay now let's do this first you can see that it has many polygons I don't want that I want to decimate this so you can use decimate modifier in here set it to something like mm, 0 0.05 it's gonna take some time that's okay don't worry about that and let me check it I think I still have a little bit too much too many polygons I said it to something about this one well in here uh, I set the number to 0 0.02 for just testing and as I said, uh, I used the smooth modifier. If I had the uh, scattering object in this geometry nodes, I would smooth these uh, scattering object too, and I didn't want that. So you can see that I can preserve these uh, scattered object in here, and otherwise I couldn't have that. Now, before going further, I wanna uh, for having better performance, I wanna turn off the geometry node and the smooth modifiers. Now we are going to add another geometry node. Well, there are multiple ways to make wireframe out of this shape. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to talk about one which, which I think is the best one. Um, okay we want to use the extrude node in here extrude mesh let me scale it down you can see okay uh, I actually want to if this is my polygon I want to insert this polygon something like this okay and how can I do that this is where I can use extrude mesh node for making such effect and I should also use the scale elements in here and I want to select the top elements of this only these faces you can see so I plug in this top selection to the selection of the scale elements and I can just change these top faces you can see that I lower the scale something like this you can see you can play with it uh, make your own ideas but uh, for inserting a face I should actually set the scale to zero so and in here I'm going to delete the inserted uh, faces delete geometry set it on face and set the selection to top you can see I have it 
I can scale it down or up to have a wireframe. Let me just turn off these scattered objects and delete them. Okay. Now I have the one dimension of this wireframe. I need to extrude them inward. Copy this extrude mesh. And you can see, but this time I just want to unflag these individuals. I want to extrude them uniformly. Okay. And let me just scale it down a little bit. But you can see that um, when I'm extruding this, I'm losing the back faces, like here. So I'm going to import back those faces. I'm going to use join geometry and now you can see we have our faces back but there is a problem. Let me show you the face orientations. These faces are backward because uh, before extruding them they were in the right direction, which was outward. Uh, it was something like this. Okay, they were in the right orientation. So before joining them, I need to flip their faces. Now we have everything right. Okay. And just uh, for changing the direction of the extrusion inward or outward you can just use a flip face in the beginning like this you can see if I turn this off or on they're going outward inward and I'm going to actually use the inward extrusion in here because uh, I'm going to show you in further steps well this is our wireframe and for having that effect I'm going to smooth those wireframes using subdivision surface and level up. I'm going to use set shade smooth. But uh, you can see that these faces are not smoothed. Why? That's because I forgot to just uh, merge the overlap points in here. Let me show you. When I join the geometry, join these parts together, when I join them, um, their points just got overlapped to each other and they are not connected. So I should merge using uh, merge by distance and set it to a super small value now in here you can see that these faces are also smooth and we are good and in the last step if you want to give a little bit more details to this shape you can use dull mesh in the beginning and what does this node do? Let me show you. If these are the faces, it just gets the center point of each face and connect them to each other like this. And gives us a new shape. So let me check it. Now you can see, let me turn this off and on. It's more beautiful shape, I think, using dual mesh. Now I'm going to turn on my first geometry nodes and my smooth modifier. Here's our mesh. 
you can see it is a little bit too dense i can just lower my ratio in the decimate modifier to have a lower density on this mesh and also need to change some parameters like in first geometry node no actually i mean in the last geometry node i want the extrusion to be a little bit smaller the second extrusion i want this to be something like 0035 and now there we have it it is beautiful i can turn on my scattered object let me check the inside it does it doesn't have enough accuracy in here you can see you can just make it more accurate by going into the first geometry nodes and you can just give a subsurface modifier in the first step and it still didn't fix it but you can see that why I uh, extrude this mesh inward so to cover this artifact if you are so uh, obsessed with this issue you can just increase the amount of voxels and or the subdivision or you can just um, increase the extrusion the inward extrusion and you can fix this okay but from outside everything is okay and you can have your render and I also want to increase the numbers I go into the scatter set the number to something like 30 now we have it you can just play with the scales and this was just for demonstration you can see that uh, I didn't go super accurate with the sizes like in here but you have the base mesh you have the method you can just make anything you want and this is completely procedural you can give it um, any shape you want okay friends if you like the video please consider hitting the like button at last i want to show that twin tagma i learned many things from them and they helped the community so much and i hope you have good days and nights and goodbye